You most kind of grace Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father, I just pray you to be with us today. And, uh, Lord, you speak through your word. And, uh, Father, I just pray that if there's anyone here today that don't know you as Lord and Savior, today would be that day they make uh, that decision for you, Father. Lord, maybe there's people here today that are wavering, Lord. They got out of the will of God. And uh, I pray today would be that day that they come back to you, Father. And, uh, Lord, we thank you. We love you. We pray all for all the ones on our prayer list. The prayer is mentioned here this morning, Lord. You. You know each and every day, Father, and I pray your will be done in each and every situation. Uh, Lord, we just lift up this church, lift up every family. We thank you, we love you, we praise you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, so many years ago, there was a, a man, and he was riding on the stage, folks, which I guess that gives you a hint. It was many years ago, we don't ride on the stage, folks, or some more. But this man, he was riding on the stage, coach, and uh, as he was riding on the stage, coach, there was a young lady that was riding along. Uh, in the same stagecoach, and she was she was humming a verse of, of the hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. And this man that was riding in the stagecoach, his name was, was Robert Robertson. And uh, after the young lady finished uh, humming this hymn, she looked at the old guy and she said, uh, what do you think about the hymn that I, I just hummed? And, you know, his answer probably seemed strange to her, but he said that I'm the poor old fellow that broke that hymn. And he said, if I had a thousand words to give, I would give them to be able to feel what I felt when I penned those words many years ago. You know, this old man that was riding in the stagecoach with his young lady actually wrote that hymn earlier in his life. A little story about Mr. Robinson he was saved at the age of 19 uh, by the grace of God. And uh, George Whitefield was a great Methodist preacher back in those days. And, and he had preached and, uh, the night that uh, Mr. Robinson had got saved. And uh, the thing is, uh, a little bit later, Mr. Robinson became a, a preacher in the Methodist church a few years later. And then after that, he moved from the Methodist church to the Baptist church, and he stayed at the Baptist church for a little bit. And then he wandered to the Unitarian church, a church that denounces the deity of Christ, and he spent time there. See, this man, Mr. Robson, knew about wandering. Uh, he knew what it meant to wander far away from the God that he loved. And, and, and I tell you, he, from all instances that we read about uh, Mr. Robson, he died a miserable, wayward soul away from away from God. He had got so far away from God in his Christian life. You know, he wrote these these words, he wrote this hymn when he was a very young preacher uh, starting out. And that was back when he, he was in communion and he had love for the Lord. And uh, I want to read you a, just a, a few of these words in verse 3. I want you to listen to what the word says that he penned here. It says, Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I am constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a feather bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Hear my heart, Lord, take it, seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. You know, if anybody knew about what those words truly meant, it was this man that penned that after he got out of the will of God. He had wandered far away from God. You know, in the scripture we just read just a minute ago, we are introduced to another man uh, that knew what it meant to be out of the will of God, to get away from God. This man's name was Demas that we're uh, introduced here in chapter 24. A list along with, with another list of a couple of other people that you might know. Marcus in that, that verse is, is John Mark. Uh, we know John Mark because he wrote the Gospel of Mark. Uh, also, uh, Lucas. That was uh, Luke. We know Luke wrote the Gospel of Luke and he also wrote the, the book of Acts. Uh, and the other gentleman, uh, Arist uh, Aristarchus, uh, he is a man that spent a lot of time in prison ministering to Paul. Uh, during uh, Paul's time uh, in, in prison. But you know, the, the thing is, Demas knew also what it was to lose that, lose that closeness with God. 
Uh, like I said, he, he got away from God and he ended up uh, a long way from God. And I want to look at what it says about we can find out in the Word of God about this man. See, he's only mentioned three times in the whole New Testament. One of them is the one I read here. It just simply states that he is a, a fellow laborer of Paul uh, here in these. But I tell you, there, as we look into the Word of God here, there are, even though he was just briefly mentioned, I tell you, there's some things that we can learn from the life of Demas that can help us from falling into the same thing that Demas fell into, and that is to end up out of the will of God. First of all, one of the first things that we can learn is a perfect start does not promise a perfect ending. You know, in 1936, the Olympics was held in Berlin, Germany. At that time, Hitler was <coughs> over Germany. And Hitler thought this, the 36th Olympics was going to be the perfect time for him to show how great the Aryan race was, how they were so much better than everybody else. But we know it didn't turn out quite like Hitler thought it would. We know because of the likes of Jesse Owens. Uh, he won, I think, four gold medals in the 36th Olympics. And, but I tell you, one of the greatest defeats in the in the 36 Olympics was a relay race, the women's 400 meter relay race. Because see, the German women, they were hands over favorite to win this event. Uh, they thought they were unbeatable. And the Americans, when they went into this, they were underdogs. Uh, but we know when, when the gun fired, the Germans, they, they did what they were supposed to do. They jumped out to a, a good start. And I tell you, they stayed ahead of the Americans, all legs of the race, except until the very end of the race. And in a, in a relay like that, you have to pass a baton <coughs> at different times. And the very last person to run is called the anchor. And this last German lady, when she was past the baton, uh, the anchor lady, as she started to run, she already had an eight-yard lead on the Americans. But you know what happened? She dropped the baton. And because of that, she was disqualified. And the Americans won the gold medal in that. And I tell you, that goes to show you that, hey, even though you might get a good start, it doesn't promise you a good finish. I tell you, they did everything right. When the gun fired, they jumped out ahead. And they led most of the race until the very end. And when they failed, and I tell you, God doesn't want us to end up in the same position as believers. He doesn't want us to, to start the race right and, and then end up wavering from God like the like demons that we read about here in these scriptures. You know, the, the thing is, Jesus talks about people like this in Luke chapter 8, verse 13, when he talks about the different soils that the good seed fell on. And he talks about the stony or the rocky ground. Uh, he said they hear and receive the word with joy and, and they have uh, no roots and while they believe for a while and in a time of temptation they fall away. See, Jesus is talking about people here that, that start out on the right foot. They start out like they're supposed to but I tell you, when trials and temptations come their way, they fall away from God. And I, I tell you, we need to understand as, as, as believers, there's going to come time to trials and time to temptation in our life. And I tell you, we need to be secure in our faith and not uh, do like Demas did and fall away. You know, there's been a lot of people that see people start like this. Even the disciples, you know, they probably thought Judas Iscariot was a saved man. By all indications, we see that they even trusted Judas. He carried the money. He was a treasurer. They trusted him with the money. And undoubtedly, they thought he was a, a saved individual. But see, they didn't know what Jesus knew. Jesus says in, in John chapter 6, verses 70 and 71, Jesus answered them, Have I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil. And he spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. For he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. See, the thing is, what things look like on the outside are not always true. I tell you, you know, we see this in the in the life of Demas. So we see that that even though he started out on the right foot, he failed 
and fell away from God. So what are some things that we can learn from, from Demas' story that can help us? First of all, we, can, we need to be absolutely sure that you come to Jesus the right way in the beginning. That's the most important thing. I tell you, we need to know that we have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we have to understand. See, salvation, a relationship with Jesus, doesn't come through joining the church. It doesn't come through being baptized. We can dump you all day long in this, in this, this baptism right here. And if you hadn't started a personal relationship with Christ, all you will be is really wet. I mean, that's, that's just the facts of it. But the thing is, you cannot come to know Christ as your personal Savior by doing good deeds or, or, or being a better person. So you have to be born again. We've talked many times about this. You have to experience that rebirth that Jesus talked about with, with, with Nicodemus. He told him you've got to be born again. He's talking about spiritually born again through the Spirit of God coming into our heart and lives and saving us through our belief in the finished work of what Jesus done on the cross. But we also need to understand that the Christian race is not a marathon, uh, not a sprint, it's a marathon. See, the thing is, we need to understand we're in this thing for the long haul. And God wants you to serve Him throughout your days here and into eternity. I tell you, we need to understand that when things come in our lives, trials and tribulations, we need to run that race as Paul talks about many times and run it with endurance. I tell you, God wants us to hold out uh, for His glory here on earth. But I tell you, you know, we see it from time to time played out in churches. We see people that come up and they make a profession of faith and, and for a, maybe a couple months or maybe even a year they, they, they're faithful and then before you know it, you can't find these people. Why? Because they, they didn't understand, hey, this is, it's not just how you begin, it's also how you finish the race. They let their self get weighted. They let sin come into their life and they let it lead them away from God. But we also see that we need to take the time in our Christian walk to encourage other brothers and sisters that we come in contact with. I tell you, it's important for us here at Wheeler Grove to encourage our other believers here. Because I tell you, you never know what somebody's struggling with. You never know what somebody's going through. Yeah, sometimes we can see it through their attendance and, and maybe they not come to church like they should. And we need to learn to be there and be that encourager. Not to, to look down on people, but to encourage and lift people up. And I tell you, if we do these things, I tell you, we can help people get back to where they need to be. We can point them to where they need to be in the Lord. But we also need to remember that even if, if you start right, it, you can always fall along the way. We see it in the, in the, the life of Demas. You know, apparently, by all things that we see, he started out right. He was faithful in doing the work of the Lord, but we see that in time that he fell away. And I tell you, sometimes we get a little prideful as believers. Uh, we, we think, well, that might happen to so-and-so, but that's not going to happen to me. But I tell you, when you get to thinking that way, that's exactly who the devil wants you to be. I tell you, that's when you let pride enter in and, and you begin to slip and you begin to slide back on God. I tell you, we need to understand it can happen to any of us. And it might possibly, you might be in that situation today. I tell you, I, I can't tell who you're at spiritually with God. But I tell you, you know who you're at with God. And a lot of times, we don't want to own up. We want to we say, nah, that's not what it is. You know, I just do this. I, I slipped a little bit. But we need to understand, that's not where God wants us. So you have to understand, the perfect start does not promise us the perfect finish. But we also need to see that a downward slope is gradual, but it's slippery. <coughs> you know, as I'm studying about this, I read about, any of y'all ever been to Stone Mountain in Georgia? I read about a, a guy, he, he climbed up one of the hiking trails of many years ago to Stone Mountain. And when he got up there, he wanted to look over the edge. So he climbed across the fence. And he began to creep over to the edge to where he could see over and see how far it is down. 600, I think it was like 600 feet to the bottom of it. 
And as he, you know, it kind of rounds off. And as he starts to ease over to the egg, before he knew it, he had just got too far. And when he, by the time he turns and tries to go back up, he realizes it's it's way too slick for him to, to be able to climb back up the, to the top of the, the thing there. So he falls down to the thing. He holds on as long as he can. But his arms get tired. And we know that he fell to his death. He fell 600 foot off of a stone mountain. And he died. You know, when we first meet Demas in these verses here, uh, Paul commends him for his service. Paul said he's a, a fellow laborer. You know, but the, the thing is, the next time we hear about Demas in Colossians 4.14, all Paul says about him in that is he says, and Demas. See, there was no condemnation of uh, comments for him. You know, he didn't say, hey, uh, he's doing a great job like he did before, a great fellow laborer. Apparently there had been something going on in Demas' life, and, and Demas had begun probably to, to fall away from the things. Yeah, he was still showing up uh, for service, but I tell you, there was something wrong, and eventually. That led him farther and farther away from the Lord. And you know, before we know it, he began to, to backslide. But you know, I want you to know, it wasn't a quick happening thing. It was something that happens gradually. If you think that you're going to wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to black, backslide away from God, that's not how it happens. See, it's very subtle. See, the devil is sneaky in his devices. He wants to come in. He wants us to, to make... A little adjustment in our life here. We want to give in a little bit here and a, a little bit there. And before you know it, before you realize it, you done gave over to that old nature, that old nature you used to have, and you're not following the Spirit of God in your life. And I, I tell you, you learn very quick what the Bible says when it, when it says in Galatians 5 9, a little leaven leaven the whole lump. I tell you, the thing is, when we let sin enter into our life, I tell you, it drags us farther and farther away from God. See, the thing is, we begin to listen to temptation. And I tell you, once we do this, we start on a gradual downslope. First of all, after we listen to temptation, then we begin to believe the deception of the flesh. See, the thing is, as we begin to listen to that deception and the belief of it, then sin is conceived in our heart. But then the very next thing that we do, we act out on that sin. Uh, that sin, we go from, we go to implement that sin in our life. And I tell you, that's when we start that downward fall away from God. You know, sin, like I said, doesn't happen all at once and we're away from God. I want to read you what James said about it in, in James chapter 1, verse 14. He said, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away from his own lust and enticed. And when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. I tell you, sin leads us farther and farther <coughs> away from God. You know, therefore, believers... We need to learn a lesson from all the examples that we have in the Word of God. Uh, we see it throughout the Word of God. God lays out examples in the life of fellow believers how they let sin come into their life and how they let it draw them away from God. Even great men like David, King David, he was a man after God's own heart. But we see that he let temptation come into his life. And we see when that led him, it led him to a path of sin away from God. We also know the story of Samson. Samson was asleep when he fell away from God. He had gave his secret uh, of his strength away and he went to sleep and, and Delilah cut his hair. And we know when he woke up, he, at first he didn't even know that the Spirit of God had been removed from him. He jumped up to, to fight like he usually does. He usually just whooped everybody and run them off. But when he does this, he couldn't do it because he had lost his strength. Because why? He let sin come into his life. He broke the he broke his commitment to God when he let her know that his hair was his strength. I tell you, the, the thing is, the same thing can happen to us in our Christian life. We let sin come into our life that leads us farther and farther away from God. You know, in Acts uh, chapter 20, verse 9, we told a story of a, 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 a young man called Titius. And he was listening to Paul preach. 
And it was on the third floor. He was sitting in the windowsill. And as Paul was preaching, this young man fell asleep. And he, I, I, I see some of y'all out there today. Uh, he fell asleep and he fell out the window of, of, the, of the, the building there. And he died. But we know from the story, Paul went down to this young man. And through the power of God, Paul raised him up from the dead. I want to give you some theology here. You might be right just now. When he fell out that window, there was more of him hanging out the window than was in the window. See, what I'm trying to tell you is, it was a gradual thing. That's the way it is in our life when we get away from God. We kind of keep sliding away from God and away from God. And before we know it, just like Deacius fell out that window, we're too far gone. We're on that downward slope that I was telling you about. And I tell you, when you get on that downward slope of sin, it is, it is, it is slippery. And I tell you, it's hard to get back. We need to listen to all the people that we read about in the Word of God. We need to uh, understand it. If we could talk to David today, he would tell us, hey, don't do it. If we could talk to uh, uh, Samson, he would say, don't do it. I tell you, it's going to cost you. It cost David a lot. It cost Samson a lot. I tell you, there's never a time when you let sin into your life as a Christian that it's not going to cost you. I tell you, it will cost you eternity. Because we know that we're sealed to that day of redemption until we stand before Christ as, as Lord and Savior in, in heaven that day. I tell you, we're saved for all eternity. But I tell you, we need to understand it will cost you here now. But we also see from these verses here that your direction always determines your destination. You know, if I wanted to go to California from here, I would go out in Highway 20, I would go to, to, to Memphis, and I would get on 55, go run over to, to 40, and I could get on 40, and I could drive that 40 all the way to California. But I tell you, I couldn't get on 40 and go to Florida. You know, the reason I can't is because 40 is not over Florida. See, the thing is, we need to understand, when we walk the path of life here, when we get off the chosen path that God has for us, when we get out of the will of God, I tell you, we, our destination veers off from where God is leading us. I don't want you to misunderstand me. The thing is, our eternity is secure for all eternity. I tell you, our final eternal destination is sealed. We're as good and in heaven as we are there today. But I tell you, our earthly destination is not sealed here. I tell you, see, the thing is, we get on these paths that lead us away from the will of God. And I tell you, you cannot do God's will when you're on one of these wayward paths leading you in the wrong direction. And I tell you, when you get on that path that's leading you in the wrong direction, I tell you, it's going to lead you farther and farther and farther away from the will of God in your life. And I tell you, before long, you're going to look back and you're going to wonder, how did I get so far away from God? See, it didn't happen all at once. It happened by giving a little here, letting this little sin, the gray areas people like to call it. But I tell you, sin is sin. There's no gray areas. I tell you, the devil just wants to entice us with that and lead us away from God. We see this time and time again. We see in the life of the, the prodigal son in, 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 in uh, Luke you know, the thing is, he just wanted his money up front, his inheritance. He wanted to go out and have a good time. That's like kids nowadays. They just want to go out and have a good time. And the thing is, he didn't plan on staying that long, but before he knew it, he was broke. And he found himself in a place he never thought he would be. He was laying in a hog pen with nothing at all to eat. He was beginning to eat the slop that the hogs had. And he realized, hey, even the servants in my father's house have more than they need. And he realized he had done gotten wayward from the will of his father. And I tell you, that's the way we are in our Christian life. If we stay on that path, we're going to find ourselves in the depths of sin, rolling in water, just like this uh, the, the prodigal son found himself. But we need to understand sin will take you farther than you want to go. Make you pay more than you want to pay. Make you stay longer than you want to stay. I tell you, sin will always cost you. That's why we need to choose 
The narrow road in our Christian life. The one Jesus talked about. That straight and narrow. Focus on the will of God in our life. But I tell you, too many times in our Christian life, we end up on that broad way. Uh, we get off that narrow path and we get on that broad way that is filled with sin and obstacles for the will of God in our life. And I, I tell you, we need to get back to where God wants us to be. I tell you, when you get off out of God's will, I tell you, you start to grow cold of uh, toward the things of God. And I tell you, you begin to get colder. And the longer you stay, the colder you get. And before you know it, you grow so cold for the things of God, you have no desire to go back to where you need to be. I tell you, I read a story about a long time ago if the Eskimos wanted to kill a wolf, what they would do, they would take a knife and they would sharp this knife until it was razor sharp. Or, I mean, just a touch would just cut you open. And they would take that knife and he would dip it in water's blood or seal blood and then he would freeze it. And then he would dip it into the end and freeze it. He would keep repeating this until the entire blade was a block of blood. And then he would take that knife and he would freeze it into a block of ice with a blade up. And then he would take that block of ice with that knife and he would set it out by the trail where the wolf would be coming through. And when that wolf would come through, he would smell that blood and it would lure him in. And he would start to lick that blade. And that blood, it tasted good. It tasted good to him. He would lick it more. And as he began to lick this blade, he was feeding that primal instinct. And as he licked away all the, the frozen blood from the blade, his tongue had not become numb from the cold. And before we know it, he's licking just a blade. And the blood he's tasting is his own blood. And I tell you, he just sends him into a, a feeding frenzy. And he licks that blade until he bleeds to death there and dies. See, that's the way sin is in our life. I tell you, if you start feeding sin, I tell you, the desire in your life will get stronger and stronger and stronger. And before you know it, that thing that you wanted to do will become your master. And it will lead you farther and farther away from God. You know, most of us think, hey, we'll never be like Demas. We're going to stay on that path. That Demas probably thought the same thing when he first started following the Lord. But we see that what happened to Demas. You know, by no indication in the Bible, we don't read where Demas got back to where he needed to be in the will of God. We don't know. But I tell you, the thing is, if he did, he had to come back and repent of the sins that he had committed and rededicate himself to the will of God. <coughs> it's a lot of people today, a lot of God's children, that need to do the same thing. They got labor, they got out of the will of God. In order to get back to where you need to be, to get back on that straight and narrow, to get up back in the will of God, you need to come and you need to confess those sins and repent of them and get back to where God wants you to be. But I tell you, there might be some here today that through listening to what I've said today, what the Word of God says, you might realize that you didn't even start out the right way. You never came to Christ as a, with a personal relationship with Him. Maybe you need to do that today. I don't know what the need is, but I do know whatever the need is, my Savior is ready and willing to meet those needs. <coughs> As we're song leader, the as we stand and look, you most kind, gracious heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father, I just pray to be with us today in this invitation. Father, I just pray that if anyone here, whether there's some of my boys that don't know you're going to save your Lord, today will be that day they trust you. Maybe there's some that's out of the will of God, Father, they started on that slippery slope and Lord I pray that they see the error of the ways and they, they come back to you before they get too deep in the sin. Father, I thank you. I love you and I praise you. For some crap in my prayer.